May peace and blessings be upon you, my friends. So today I'm back with another uh, Islamiyat lesson. And as you can see on my screen, today we are going to be learning about the five pillars of Islam. Bismillah. Okay. So what are the five pillars of Islam? So I found this little image, which will tell you very uh, easily the five pillars of Islam. Okay. In Islam, in Islam, faith and good deeds go hand in hand. The concept of worship in Islam is very broad. Muslims consider doing good in life as an act of worship, speaking the truth, refraining from gossip, dealing honestly, honestly honestly in commercial in commercial affairs treating one's parents with respect and honor helping the poor and needy dealing lovingly and fairly with family members are among some of the good deeds that are encouraged in islam encourage means appreciated the five pillars of Islam are the foundations of, Muslims li of Muslim life. They provide Muslims with formal channels to perform the central acts of worship to Allah. Now, these are the five pillars of Islam. The first is Shahada, which means profession or faith in Allah. That means you have faith in Allah. The second one is Salah. Salat, it can also be called Salat, which is our five daily prayers, Zohar, uh, actually, Zohar, Asr, and Maghrib. Actually, Fajr is also there, so that makes it five. Now, the other one is Zakat, and it means to give, like, money to poor people once in a week. And then the other one is Son, fasting. And the last one is Hajj, which is, of course, only compulsory for adulthood. So, us kids don't need to do but it will be awesome if us kids can do uh you know uh, fasting or daily prayers or so hajj means pilgrimage to to Makkah. so the five pillars of islam you now know right but one thing how can we not stop ourselves from doing the five pillars of Islam. So the first, the be, uh, what I recommend to not stop yourself from doing, uh, from not doing uh, the five pillars is basically how to stop yourself from not doing the five pillars of Islam. So basically go ahead on whatever uh, whatever prayer you're praying, like if you're doing the uh, the horma, uh, namaz or you're doing asr or maghrib namaz or isha, so then you can just go ahead, raise your hands up to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and pray to Him. Oh, oh, Allah name whatever name you would like to use. I suggest using uh, the name that we love the most of Allah. For me, I absolutely love Al Rahman. That's my favorite name, which I think it's a beautiful name. Otherwise, no, all the names are beautiful. But whatever name you want to use, you can use. Even you can use plain Allah, but if you use another name, Allah will be pleased with you. Okay, so raise your hands up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, Oh Al Rahman, oh Al Rahim, whatever name. Please make me perform the five pillars of Islam daily. And like this, if you pray this dua daily, I'm telling you, you will you will feel a change in your life. I hopefully. And even if some of you aren't doing the five pillars of Islam, that's okay. But now the most compulsory five pillars of Islam is weird. Mm -hmm. The most compulsory five pillars of Islam is Salah, which Salat, and then it's Shahada, which are which like kids also need to do professional faith, and then fasting. Yeah, you can do fasting uh, above or under the age of twelve. It's your choice. If a person does it at the age of eight or, or even six, oh my goodness, that Allah will be so happy with you. And well, this one is 
uh, important, but only for adulthood. When you reach adulthood, then you have to do Hajj. And then Zakat. Well, even a kid can do Zakat. You take some money from your money pouch if you don't have like in notes of money, like you know those notes of money. You can just use some coins. I'm sure everybody has coins. So these are the most important, which kids also need to do. Our Salat, our Shahada, our Zakat, and fasting. So now, first of all, I'm going to be telling you guys, I'm going to be telling you guys, I'm going to be telling you guys, the all of the, all, uh, I'm going to be telling you guys all the five pillars uh, understand me. Like you, I'm going to be telling you more about them so you can understand about them better. Okay. So first are Shahada. So have you ever heard of the kal uh, Kalma Shahadat? It goes like this. Actually, I'm sorry, I don't remember it. But by reciting this Kalma, actually, you know, if someone's a Christian, then if they recite this uh, Kalma, they, re uh, they revert to Muslim. So they become a Muslim. They're no longer non-Muslim. So they become a believer. But of course, for believers, they have to do righteous deeds. They have to prove to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because no one can just say I'm a true believer without doing the righteous deeds. Okay. So if you if a Christian recites this Qalma Shahada, this means I bear witness that I so this actually means that Muslims declare that Muslims declare that. Uh, Muslims declare by reciting this kalma that uh, by this kalma that there's there's oneness of Allah like nobody else is of Allah there's only one and one Allah so Muslims declare by reciting this uh, uh, kalma that there's only one Allah so if a Christian does it then he will also declare that so then whoever if a Christian recites this kalma they converge to Muslims to Islam and then they start living the Islam life okay and now the second one is Salah so oh wait I'm not done with Shahada now the and also faith having true trust in Allah when you're in a painful moment you uh trust Allah you make dua to him that's having that's called having faith in Allah now let's move to Salah so you must know our five daily prayers which are Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib and Isha so these are our five daily prayers so you must know that uh any one, uh, all of them are important. They're not five. All of them are, are important. And the most, uh, I mean, this one is not that much important. It's called the Hajjud. But uh, you have to wake up in the middle of night. I forgot what time is it. You have to pray. But the Hajjud leads to, leads to such massive, massive gifts. Massive gifts. If you pray to Hajjud, you Allah will reward you with massive gifts. Like large, large, large gifts. Like I can't even tell the size of them. Okay. So you must know this. Now, the second one is the, wait, Salah. So one other thing about Salah is showing our way how to like, you know, when you do Salah, you're Talk, you're calling out to yourself to Allah, right? So like you're saying Allah, Allah, which means uh, Allah is the greatest, Allah is the greatest and now Allah, then you're reciting Surah Al-Fatiha, then you're reciting the Ruchiri, then you're reciting, okay? So like that. Then you're reciting, uh, then you're reciting Surah Al-Fatiha or Surah Nas, whatever Nas, whatever Surah you're reciting. You have to keep on changing them. It's better if you keep on changing them. Now, okay, so you knew Salah. Now, Zakat is giving a poor, like once a week, if it's good, you should all, if you're free, you should always pay Zakat to the needy people. It's like people, poor people who actually need Zakat, who need money to survive, then you should pay to them. Once a week is fine, but if you do it, like literally, uh, 
My friends, people who do zakat daily, you must think it's a normal thing. Now, what will Allah do it? But Allah will pay them such good rewards. I'm telling you, even if you do it once a week, Allah will be happy. If you do it one day, Allah will be happy. But the most, my, so now you understand. If you do it one day, now can you imagine how much Allah will be happy and pleased with that person? What they do daily? So if you become that person, may Allah grant, grant you Jannah. And now the other one is on fasting. Psalm actually, not Psalm. <laughs> Sorry, the M was hidden here. Okay. So fasting is um, fasting you can do if you're on the age of 12 or under 12. People who do it when they're like on the age under 12 or uh, under 12, like eight, six or something, Allah rewards them with much more because you're going to be doing fasting in such a uh, short age. Okay, like a very low age. Okay, so that's when we have fasting. And fasting, and have you ever wondered why we do fasting? Well, we do fasting because uh, that's our way. Allah tests us from in this Ramadan that Allah will show us the life of the poor. Like literally, poor people are fasting each day because they don't have, they don't eat anything, right? So that's what we do in fasting. We don't eat uh, anything until a month. Or, but poor people don't even eat anything until Maghrib, literally. So that's why in Ramadan, a lot of mosques uh, uh, give uh, give iftar and people go to the needy for uh, needy people. Um, to the needy, to the poor people and give them iftar and people go to orphanages and give the ch ch kids iftar like that. Now, the last one is Hajj, which is only compulsory when you have reached the adulthood. Like uh, if you are a kid right now or a teenager, you don't have to do Hajj. That is not compulsory for you. People who have reached uh, the, the adulthood, they can manage without anybody like taking care of them. They can manage travel, though that's compulsory for them. Now... May Allah guide us all to this great path, inshallah, and I will see you, uh, and I will see all of you guys uh, in a, a someday other. Allah hafiz, everybody.